Hi guys! So as you can tell by my wild, crazy, curly hair, today we're going to do a makeup transformation inspired by one of my very favorite villains of all time, the character The Penguin. Specifically the one from Batman Returns. If you didn't know, Tim Burton directed it. I mean, Christopher Walken was in this movie. One of the best Catwomans played by Michelle Pfeiffer was in it. Danny DeVito did such a great job playing the Penguin, Oswald, Cobblepot. I just love his very long nose, his eyes, his gross teeth when it like bleeds black goo when he eats fish. This makeup was originally done by V. Neal and she is a goddess. She's my queen. She's one of my very favorite people, so I hope I don't let her down. I absolutely love it and I feel like I'm the only one who likes this movie. But we are going to see if we could turn into the penguin using prosthetics and other things. So let's see the magic and how it turns out. First, I'm going to get a headband to get my curly hair out of my face so that we can apply some paint on. Make sure your face is absolutely clean. You really want to make sure you get all the dirt off. Because I'm going to be putting on some foam prosthetics. I got this rubber wear of a foam prosthetic face of a forehead and I also got a Cyrano nose, the large one, which isn't exactly like the penguin from Batman. Penguins is more turned down and this one's more straight out, but it will do. It's around the same shape and the forehead piece, the nose bridge on it is a little too wide, but this is as close as I'm going to get without building my own prosthetics and that would take a lot of time and money. I think these pieces will do. When it comes to prosthetics, I like to start in the center of my face and move outward. So we're going to start with the nose first, plus the forehead piece, the bridge of it goes over that nose. So you want to get some prosade with a Q-tip, and I like to start on the tip of my nose and move outward. You don't want to put too much prosade, and you don't want to put too little. It has to be gooey enough to where you can move the appliance so that it won't stick there. If you make a mistake forever, you will have some give, just for a couple of seconds. And with a clean Q-tip, I am going to roll the edges to make sure that they stick on correctly and I don't have any seams that are terrible and bad. I'm going to get some 99% alcohol and smooth down those edges. It will give me some lift movement of the prosade. And then I want to powder the edges down. If you could tell when I did the prosade, I went a little above and beyond the appliance where it adheres to my face because I would rather put too wide of a strip of prosade than keep going back in. Now it is time to fit my face for that huge forehead foam appliance. I'm just making sure I know where exactly it's going to go, where I want to put the prosade at. Then again, putting some prosade on the bridge of my nose. Like I said, I'm starting from the middle and going outwards and up. This one's a little different since it's so large, I'm doing one piece at a time. So I make sure the bridge of my nose sticks first. I love how at this point I could like move this appliance while it's sticking to my bridge of my nose and it looks like a hammerhead shark. And then I'm going to start putting prosade on the middle part of the center of my forehead all the way up to where the prosthetic would end. And then I'm going to do my other side of my forehead around the eyebrow. Make sure you do this around the eyebrow and not on your eyebrow hairs because this will tear apart your eyebrows if you get prosade on any of your hair. There might be some of the foam appliance sticking out near my hairline. That's because I do not want to put prosade that close to my hairline and I don't want to rip any hairs out. And I'm going to do the same on the other side of my face. Or the pieces of the appliance that are sticking out a little bit near my hairline where I didn't want to put prosade, that they aren't going to be seen. I could just cover it with this hat later. In between, I'm fitting this hat on that I'm going to put later to make sure the appliance doesn't restrict it from going all the way on my head. Now, with a red cosmetic stipple sponge, I am getting some more prosade and stippling texture onto the foam prosthetic and on my skin. I want there to be layers that gradually fade into my natural skin from the prosthetic so the texture is similar. And this is also going to be great for the paint I'm going to put on because it makes it or helps it adhere to the prosthetic better, all those paints. This is really going to help your edging too. You can dry your glues and prosthetic with a blow dryer and really let your hair just dance in the wind. Now once your glue and your prosthetic has dried, you're going to get some packs or what I have here is rubber mask grease paint. With a disposable makeup sponge and applied it onto my face and especially that prosthetic. And I'm also going to paint this on my face. I want everything to blend together and look like it's one piece, not just things pasted on my face. You want to get a brush instead of the sponge in areas that are very small and have creases where the sponge can't necessarily reach. To do the face paint, I started off with my own skin tone in the rubber mask grease paint kit. And then a second layer of the grease paint, I used the yellow and the neutral 
lightest tones in this kit, some red and some blue, and a little bit of my own skin tone. To make this face paint color of like a Tim Burtonish dead penguin skin, he has like this very slimy, bluish white ghostly skin tone. So I'm trying to mimic that with two layers of grease paint. And like I said, with the second layer of paint, you really wanna make sure that your skin blends into this appliance nicely and it doesn't look like you just pasted huge things on your face. I kinda look like a shark the more I look at this, especially with the lighter skin tone. And you wanna make sure it goes down your neck a little bit too, because we are gonna put on a collared shirt later, but you don't want your normal skin tone in this lighter one to show through, it'll look really weird. Now it is time to powder your face. I'm getting a giant powder puff with just some translucent powder. Ben Nye, RCMA are both really good brands. Or you can use baby powder if you're on a budget. But if you use baby powder, make sure your makeup is completely dry first or else it'll pick up the white cast from the baby powder. Now it's time to do those red circles around the eyes that make the penguin look like he was punched in the face a little bit. So I'm just getting a burgundy lipstick. He has very bruised eye colors. It's that Tim Burton-ish dark circled eyes that are very known for Tim Burton's characters, but a little more red tone this time. Kind of looks like rotten raisins. And also the burgundy color from my Bin Nye Death Wheel palette and coloring in those eyes. I'm also doing some contouring with this color, but then I decided to move on to my contouring palette. What I like to use for contouring is the Poise Multitask HD Creams. These are pretty pricey, so you could just use a Bin Nye color wheel. Because the penguin from Batman definitely has expressive lines on his face and wrinkles around his eyes. I'm really making sure that those eyes are very creepily burgundy. So I'm trying to mimic that, especially the contour on my nose, because like I said in the beginning, this prosthetics has a nose bridge that's thicker than the actual penguins from the movie. And putting some wrinkles and frown marks. I'm also getting some contour to make myself a double chin. This is like the trickiest part, I'm kidding. Especially because the penguin has a creepy smirk when he's eating dead fish and biting humans. So you wanna make sure the laugh lines are really expressive and really there. And now it's time to move on to his creepy, deathly looking mouth. I'm using alcohol paints for this. You could definitely just use like red lipstick or something, but the alcohol paints look a lot like natural real life blood. And you could use alcohol paints on foam prosthetics as long as you have a few layers of makeup in between. The foam prosthetic and the alcohol paint with some powder. But like I said, I'm just doing this on my mouth making it look like drippy real blood, like a vampire. Once that bloody mouth is all done, we're gonna dry our teeth to put some tooth lacquer on. This is paint specifically for your teeth in black. If you didn't know this, in the movie, V. Neal actually used mouthwash with a drop of red and green to make Danny DeVito spit this black goo out of his mouth while he was chomping on fish. And I'm gonna blacken some dribbly bits coming out of the mouth as well with this paint in the side corners of my mouth. And once you think you have enough goo coming out of your mouth of the red and the black, it is time to get some hairspray. Not just any regular hairspray. This is white hairspray. This is a spray paint that turns your hair white and grayish, especially if you have dark hair. It might not show up on blonde hair. You might need a wig if you have blonde hair. That's why I curled my hair all gross and crinkly. I want it to look very greasy and separated. Why get a wig when you could torture your own hair? And then I got a collared white shirt. It really helps if your white shirt is already dingy and gross and dirty. Or if you have like one of those poetic, renaissance-y, fancy, fluffy lace shirts and dirty that up. I also got some black eyeliner and did the bottom lash line and a little bit of the upper lash line. And then I just got this random black like handkerchief looking tie. Although he has a very extravagant outfit with like furry looking coats and stuff that I wish I had. I would actually wear that in real life. Just making do with what I have. Then putting on this black hat, I use this for another makeup video of my 007 skull makeup. The hat that Penguin used in the movie, his was a lot bigger than this, but this will have to do. And then I got that burgundy lipstick again and smudged it really roughly on my eyes. Because if you look at V's makeup, what she did to Danny DeVito, Penguin, Batman, it's very burgundy and just like so cleanly, beautifully done. I was trying my best, trying to summon all the makeup gods for me to do this perfectly because I love this character so much. And once you think you look penguin-y enough, you're completely done with your makeup of Penguin from the movie Batman Returns. I just absolutely love this character, just his whole story, if you've seen the movie or follow any of the Batman comics. 
just like his whole life, how he was like living in the sewers and it's just so creepy and cool. He reminds me of a character that belongs in a circus, but like a really cool one you always wanna see, even though he's kinda evil. But now it is time for me to take this off and turn into my normal self. This is very, very creepy, but a lot of fun to do. I'm so sorry if some kids get creeped out by this, but I had so much fun. It was really challenging to do foam prosthetics on my face. I haven't done that in a while. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. All the products I use in my video will be listed down below, especially taking this off. You have to use isopropyl myristate and you have to be very gentle or else if you tear this off, you'll actually tear some of your skin up and like harm yourself. It takes forever to take off prosthetics, but I think the end product on how this turns out is well worth it before we start taking it off. Because once we take it off, it looks like we're tearing apart a creature. So don't rush it. I feel like every video I keep challenging myself more and more. Thank you guys so much for the support. I hope you guys enjoyed this challenging makeup of me putting prosthetics on my face. I had so much fun doing this and I'll see you in another video. Stay tuned for more makeup transformations. Love you all, bye.